back. I am Naftali Jeroy, a student at Kibab University doing journalism and mass communication. And now, <laughs> briefly, we discuss the issue of Kenyan politics. Yesterday, it was an amazing to see uh, Governor Anwar Yoro from Kirinyaga escorting uh, former Prime Minister Laira Odinga together with Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiang and other politicians from Western Kenya to Kisi. And today they are expected in Kakamega County. <laughs> now they are launching the BBI project, but Tagataga team, Ada, the Deputy President, Honorable William Ruto, have still again is the BBI. Some actually were shocked that Anwar Gulu is accompanying leaders from Western Kenya, which is, of course, a courageous move to make things. Most of the Mount Kenya leaders are either to behind whole Kenyatta or Tagataga at William Ruto, but they cannot dare to escort uh, on a Breda or Dega for fears of their home ground publics. But Anwar Igulu has managed to make that step. But today they are expecting to make they believe or they are saying they are going to soon spread all over the country. What are your views? <laughs> are you for BBI or are you against it? Of course, the advantages of BBI are uh, are available. Uh, in some way, it will bring about national integrity, stability. Post election violence will be a matter of the past. This is the main uh, agenda that they are arguing about. Others believe that it is meant to weaken the deputy president's ambition of becoming the president in the year 2022. Others believe it is an aim of uh, creating the post for former prime minister Raila Odinga together with the current president, Honorable Ruth Kenyatta, to become a uh, Kenyan Prime Minister. <laughs> All this speculation that Old Kenyatta can serve as a Prime Minister after his tenure as a President came after the court to Francis Atwali suggested that Old Kenyatta was too young to retire. <laughs> are you for it or are you against it? The then we have the issue of Miguna Miguna. Uh, it, uh, Kenyans were high in expectations that he will be returning to Kenya. But as up to uh, Thursday evening, he has been twice barred from flights to Kenya. One in Germany and of course the other in French. Why? Because the free flights, the prince, uh, alleged that the Kenyan government or the Kenyan authorities had set red alerts to the flights, preventing the plane to bar to 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 land should they have the political dissident in their port, either to Kenya or any other African country. Details or rumors have emerged that whoever prevented a uh, Meguna Meguna coming to Kenya. Who are they? It cannot be the president. Some assume it is people behind the president who only want to tarnish the president legality. Yet the president himself had assured Meguna Meguna's support in his bid to return to Kenya. He has said he had no problem with that. But who are these behind the scenes who are controlling that? Meguna Meguna was pushed out of the country at the rough conditions after he sworn in the, uh, the former prime minister as the people's president. He was actually sent to first exile twice and in the second time of course he was taken while in a uh, state of unconsciousness where he regained conscience in Dubai <laughs> halfway out of Kenya, halfway to Canada, the country of destination where he was expected to go. Now this is an issue that has also come up very clear. Another issue is where the deputy president was 
in Nyeri country. A lot of donations were made for the deputy president, the people here cheered him, and even the president must have been amazed by the way the deputy president was welcomed. Yesterday he was in Togaren in Bukoma County and there was a warm up relationship between the deputy president and the public. So is there in no signs that the deputy president has a good network of backup from the country? Of course the majority of the politicians are believed to be against the deputy president and even it is believed that those politicians who back up the deputy president publicly find themselves in trouble after political scandals are released against them, like misuse of public funds and resources. And they are, of course, even need to work in their offices, <laughs> like we have witnessed with Kiabu Governor Ferdinand Oitito, or Nairobi Mike Sunko, or the uh, Saburu Governor. We also have the, the coastal MP Aisha Jumwa, who has recently faced a lot of public scandals after she publicly supported the president. Not only that, but also she backed up a candidate in a ward. Of course, he was beaten by the ODM stronghold team, mm. <laughs> but it was with a little scaffold here and there, and of course, she has. Is introduced a lot of scandals. Do you think it's so? However, uh, the hard shake has been able to raise factions in the ruling Jubilee party. There is a match the Kieleweke team and the Taga Taga team. The Kieleweke is supporting the hard shake and they had their own female. Uh, representatives, they call, are calling themselves the Embrace. Embrace seems to have disappeared up to when uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta called for the head. And then there is Inua Mama for Tagatanga. These are political women leaders, like women represent, like women county representatives, who are of course well financially endowed to join or support these organizational groups. <laughs> it is amazing how the politics of this country are just maneuvering. Of course, we are still uh, waiting for the updates. We would like to see how, whether the BBI will, of course, uh, pass through. Kenyans are at speeding. Eh? Whether the BBI will be able to pass through or not. And of course, the government is in for it. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I am requesting you to kindly follow me on YouTube at Nafaraja TV. Nafaraja TV, N A W F A R A J A. That's where you find my exciting YouTube uh, uploads. You can also subscribe and follow and. Uh, to get more of, of this years to come and of course on facebook my name is paul Odoin, Bayagori Jaroge, twitter at naftali Jaroge, instagram at naftali Jaroge. so uh, good day